So, here is my sort of a picture that uh, this is my free energy landscape as the motor is moving. Uh, at every step, the minima is somewhat lower, which is why the motor wants to step forward in this direction, right. Um, and there are these barriers, uh, of course, and the difference between these barriers is coupled to this hydro energy of ATP hydrolysis. Okay. The impetus to sort of move forward in its preferred direction come is coupled to this ATP hydrolysis step. So, ATP or GTP whatever it must bind and then hydrolyze and release the energy in order for the motor to move forward. And in a simple sort of Arrhenius picture these re if I think of this barrier this free energy barrier sort of a or free energy landscape sort of a picture then these rates uh, are sort of proportional to e to the power of minus beta of delta g of the barrier the free energy difference of the barrier this tau is something like the frequency with which you attempt these barrier crossing moves. So, if I now want to couple it to this hydrolysis what I can do is that it again at a very very zeroth order very the simplest sort of way I can try to calculate this is to go back to this lattice picture and say that. Uh, so, here is my assumption that I say that every step of the motor is accompanied by hydrolysis of a single ATP molecule. So, which means that here is my motor sitting on here on this nth lattice site and then in solution there are these ATPs and ADPs and PIs floating around right. So, something which is like this is my ATP if it just has two of or three of these blobs it is ADP and the single ones is my phosphate ions. So, I go back to this lattice gas sort of a model and then I say that when when a reaction like this happens that an ATP goes to ADP plus PI that is when the motor takes a step from n to n plus 1. Okay. So, in this lattice model then uh, coupled to this motor stepping the number of ATP molecules would have decreased by 1 and the number of ADP and phosphate molecules would have increased by 1 each right. So, I can calculate the free I can calculate the entropy difference between these two states or so the free energy difference between these two states and that would give me my free energy of hydrolysis of these ATP molecules. So, if I wanted to calculate this state for example, that the motor is in this lattice site n and let us say I have some I put some numbers I do not care I have a number of ATP mod. So, my I divide my solution into n boxes out of which I have a filled with ATP, d number of boxes filled with ADP and p boxes filled with phosphate uh, and the rest are empty. Then this is the weight of that state and I have these many triphosphate bonds a number of bonds. So, beta into a into epsilon of the bond right. So, this is my partition function corresponding to this nth state the motor being in the nth state. If the motor now takes a step such that which is coupled to hydrolysis the number of ATP molecules would decrease by 1, the number of ADP and uh, phosphate molecules would increase by 1 and the number of bonds would become a minus 1 right because 1 has been dissolved. So, I can write down the partition function for that state as well that the here is a minus 1 d plus 1 p plus 1 and here is a minus 1 to epsilon bond. Then I can calculate given these sort of uh, partition functions I can calculate the free energy of hydrolysis. Remember g is nothing but minus k b t log z right g is like minus k b t log z and therefore, delta g I can find out given that I know z n and z n plus 1. So, e to the power of minus beta delta g hydrolysis is z n plus 1 by z n which is nothing but you pick up an a you pick up a d p over here uh, you pick up 1 beta times epsilon bond because of this difference and you pick up basically you pick up this thing uh, which I have just approximated as n. So, the assumption is that this n is much much larger than a or d or p and each of these is much larger than 1. So, you have macroscopic number of ATP ADP molecules, but you have an even more larger number of uh, solution boxes okay. In that limit this a n minus a minus d minus p I just approximated as n just for ease of writing. Okay. 
anyway I did not care much uh, because I mostly focused on the ATP dependence. How does how does this hydrolysis and therefore, the barrier crossing rates how do they depend on the ATP concentration that is what I want to answer. So, therefore, if I take this formula then this what this says is that uh, delta G hydrolysis is some delta G naught which contains all of this I subsume all of this and then a KBT log concentration of ADP concentration of phosphate divided by concentration of the ATP and V is just uh, the solution volume the specific volume of the solute. So, what I have is that using this sort of very simple again uh, lattice picture I have calculated uh, how this free energy of hydrolysis depends on the concentration of ATP. Now, I will try to couple this to these stepping weights and see what then the this predicts for the motor velocities again. Because again that is something I can measure just like I measured velocity as a function of force I could in principle in experiments measure velocity as a function of ATP concentration and then I could try to see what sort of a model makes sense ok. okay. So, again I will make two of these simple approximations again without any biological motivation simply because it is easier for me to do the maths. One is that uh, I will say that only the forward rate depends on the ATP concentration the backward rate does not and of course, correspondingly the second assumption is only the backward rate depends on the ATP concentration the forward rate does not. So, here is then my picture. So, I say that first let us say that the forward rate is ATP dependent which means that here is my forward rate. So, it means that this valley sort of moves up and down as I change the ATP concentration. This one uh, the height of this barrier stays constant which means my k minus stays constant right. Okay. So, because this one stays constant uh, this barrier. So, let me call that delta g minus ok and k minus is e to the power of minus beta delta g minus and k plus is this barrier minus this hydrolysis difference. So, delta g minus plus delta g hydrolysis. Remember delta g hydrolysis is negative because you get get out some energy on hydrolysis of ATP. Is this clear? So, I have this sort of a landscape right. So, this height over here is my delta g minus right and this height over here is my delta g plus. Now, this barrier can change depending on your ATP concentrations which can become something like this maybe at a different ATP concentration without changing this barrier height ok. And this difference is what I call as the difference in the free energy minima is what I call as my delta g hydrolysis. So, my delta G plus is the difference between this delta G minus and the delta G hydrolysis. So, my delta G plus is basically delta G minus plus delta G hydrolysis and then I calculate the corresponding K plus. K plus is like e to the power of minus beta delta G plus and similarly for K minus. So, if I do that So, if I do that this is what I get uh, and this delta G hydrolysis remember I have now written in terms of my ATP concentration using the simple lattice gas sort of a model. So, I can substitute that in I can substitute that and calculate what is my velocity again by substituting it in this formula this k plus and k minus I put uh, everything else that comes in this k plus 0 term. So, this k plus 0 contains this delta g minus barrier, this delta g naught, this ADP concentration, phosphate concentration, whatever else comes I just club it together into this k plus 0. I just single out the ATP concentration dependence. So, this is how this sort of an assumption says about the velocity as a function of ATP concentration and then what it simply says is that. Um, the velocity sort of increases linearly with the ATP concentration right. It is just some k plus 0 times the ATP concentration and minus something. So, there is an intercept. So, effectively what it says is that this velocity uh, 
if you plotted it as a function of ATP concentration would go as something like this okay. Immediately you can sort of see that this is not a very good model because the motor has some inherent speed limit if you keep increasing the ATP, if you were at very low ATP concentration, so where ATP is therefore, the concentration of ATP or rather ATP hydrolysis is a rate limiting step, then of course, you could say that yes, as I increase my ATP concentration, I would expect my velocity to increase maybe, but beyond a certain point when ATP is sat at saturating concentrations, you will get somewhere, but you cannot keep increasing indefinitely, right. The motor has some biochemical constraints that what is the maximum speed it can achieve which is not captured by this sort of an assumption that if I say that the entire uh, forward rate. Uh, so, sorry the entire ATP dependence is in the forward rate then that is not a very good model because even naively you can see that that is not going to fit in with what you measure in experiments. How about the other limit? So, you can say that well only the backward rate is going to be ATP dependent which means that I will keep this part of my free energy landscape fixed. I will change the depth of this minimum right. So, that this k minus is now going to become a function of ATP, this k plus is going to be constant. So, again I put write this. Uh, so, now my thing which is stays constant is this delta g plus. So, I express my delta g minus in terms of delta g plus and the delta g hydrolysis yes. I agree. So, what you are saying is and run something like this. So, let us say I go with this forward rate assumption that this only this thing will change as I change ATP and therefore, I go from here to here with some step for this sort of a transition uh, where this one would need to change. Mm -hmm. 2 delta g and so on. Yeah, but uh, but the problem is that uh, so it is slightly different I understand what you are saying, but uh, the problem is that if a motor is walking on a trap and I am applying some force let us say I have an optical trap then as the motor walks more and more my force gets propagated. So, I shift sort of everything by f n to f times n times a. In the case of ATP binding uh, and hydrolysis that is not the case. It is not that I am supplying ATP from this end and therefore, I get something which is linear with n and I get a shift. It is binding throughout the bulk. So, that is not going to work. Yeah, so the answer is I probably, probably I guess I will think about it, but I guess the answer is that this is not a very good set of assumptions to begin with. We are just doing it simply to see what sort of things can be captured. I will think about how to make this a little more realistic, at least within this context. Uh, Yeah, as of now. So, in the if I just go on with this. So, in this case if I took that the backward rate only was ATP dependent, then again I would get some sort of a dependence on this uh, of the velocity on this ATP concentration and again everything else is plugged into this k minus 0. And then if you plotted this, this looks uh, something like this. Uh, it grows and then it saturates to a value which is like a k plus right. So, that again is slightly more realistic than this other case. So, at least within the context of these models uh, what it says is that k plus is simply k plus and the k minus if I put everything together is some uh, going to be a function of ATP and uh, Okay. That at least within this simple family of models, uh, that is what sort of makes sense. Uh, these sort of rates would get you closest to these experimental measurements. It would still not explain all the measurements like we saw. 
and it has at least this one has some internal inconsistencies uh, it seems. But that is because in some sense we are we have started out at a very um, how to say we have started out with a very wrong assumption which will never physically hold which is to say that uh, I have said that my motor has no internal states right and so it is let us say in this side versus this side. So, if the motor has no internal states they are really under sort of an equilibrium under sort of an approximation uh, there really should be no way of distinguishing this uh, this hop from that hop ok. How to say this better um, yes asymmetry in motor can do this thing, but at least in this class of models what sort of motor asymmetry do you mean for example? Exactly. So, the thing is that until and unless we actually introduce some sort of an internal variable which could be structure or which could be the state of AT bound ATP whether it is hydrolyzed or non hydrolyzed, it is difficult to actually square the physics with the biology because we are starting off from a place which does not really make much sense. We are saying that there are not there is nothing that distinguishes one state there are no multiple states of the motor, but still I am saying that this forward rate is different from the backward rate which is not very consistent with equilibrium approximations. The moment you say that no the motor has an internal degree of freedom which could be this ATP hydrolysis it could be confirmations then a lot of these problems actually go away. So, which is actually what I will try to do next. So, these sort of models are fine if you wanted a sort of uh, qualitative understanding of this uh, force velocity or this uh, ATP concentration velocity dependencies, but in order to do a little more realistic models what you need to necessarily consider is that these motors do in, in fact have internal states and then try to take write down a model that takes into account those internal states. <laughs>